All right, guys. Year six. Uh, the end of year five was uh, quite something. I got emotional at the end there. Teared, teared up a few times. Um, which is not why I haven't uploaded in like a week and a half. Uh, I just got caught up with other projects. I've been streaming, but we're back. Oh, I have a desk now, so I'm no longer sitting on the floor recording and streaming, and I'm much more comfortable, even though I would still like to get a better chair. But yeah, let's get started on year six. Let's, uh, let's see what's going on here. The colony is a mess. Um, everybody is sad. Uh, what would your mom do right now? She wouldn't complain, that's for sure. It's been hard to talk to your dad about everything. Losing your mom, then losing the colony right after, it's too much to take. Neither of you know what to say. Alright, how are we doing? Our stress level's down. What is the point of having all these kudos if I can't actually s use them to, like, buy stuff we need? Like, hello? It's not like I can mail order more supplies through, through the warm wormhole. What if you could? What? Is this the only place I can go to right now? Engineering is crammed with families and what belongings they've salvaged from the destroyed living quarters. You could spend time in your crowded temporary lodging in the classroom or help the adults try to fix things. Um, I could mourn or, or um, rebuild. I think that's all I can do. We've already... Our stress level is already at its minimum, so we're going to help rebuild the first month of quiet passage, each day plotting one after the other. You still have trouble sleeping in the classroom barracks, but there's nowhere else to go. Every day you wake with the others and try to make the best of it. Grief and anger come in waves, not just for you, but for everyone. Some days are better than others. You're assigned to help rebuild the walls. The first part of the month is spent just dragging away the wreckage, sorting it into salvage or recycling. By the time that's done, crews disassembling parts of the stratospheric have delivered enough salvage that you can begin pa work patching up the walls. A sense of urgency permeates the crew. After everything, people need to feel safe. Dis is on the work crew with you, something he does begrudgingly. Walls didn't help the first time. We should just tear them all down and live like the animals do. If someone planted a bunch of buildings on my land, I'd be pissed off too. This is right. You don't go so far as to sabotage the walls, but you certainly don't contribute. You and Disc drag your feet, sulking anytime someone tells you to work harder. Surprisingly, you don't get in trouble. You're just kids after all. No one expects you to get back to work right away after a huge trauma like losing your home. All right. Plus one to physical cards. All ca strength cards under two become two. So is that going to... Hmm. Oh, because that's already a two, duh. Maybe not that then. But also maybe. I don't have any gems, so what do I want to do here? Probably take away this card and just put out the other cards, or <sighs> should I put all the twos next to each other? Is this the most efficient way to do this? Probably not. Um, that's a better score. Is there a way I can put... Uh, 
Didn't I get 20 before? I had a better setup before. When I had all the twos, the three twos together. Uh, you know what? Whatever. I don't need to do well here. I don't know why I'm so concerned. The sun's finally dawn again on your birthday. You wake early and climb to the top of engineering to watch the first sun's watery rays break through, break through the horizon as the wormhole recedes across the sky. Dawn should represent hope after a long period of silent darkness, but this light only reveals the full extent of the damage to the colony. I don't know why I bother grabbing snacks for this, because I'm talking the entire time. I don't get a break from talking, I'm just reading all the dialogue. <laughs> You've been having trouble sleeping, but like most people, it's hard to find rest crammed in the, into the classroom with all the other kids and their families, and every time you close your eyes, you see. You shake your head to clear the memories. Is there anything you could have done? Or is the colony destiny to be destroyed, no matter what you do? A little meta there. You pull your blanket more tightly around your shoulders. Not your blanket. That one's gone. And stare out as the sun rises on the horizon meager and sickly. Hey kiddo, I was looking for you. Nice view, huh? At least we got a rooftop patio out of the deal. He laughs a little at his own joke, then just sort of trails off with a sigh afterward. He puts his arm around your shoulders and you sit in silence for a while, watching the sunrise pick out all the gr broken glass littering the fields, glimmering like a field of stars. I'm just gonna be holding this Oreo for five minutes. But neither of you really know what to say. It's clear your dad feels like he has to give you a pep talk, but there's an oppressive nature to the silence that makes it feel impossible for either of you to start. Eventually, he just sighs in his shoulder slump. I know things seem pretty bad right now, he says, squinting into the sunrise. It sounds like it's taking all his effort not to cry. But it'll get better. It has to, right? You're not so sure. At least your mom wasn't here to see this, he mutters. That's the silver lining, I guess. You watch the sunrise together for a few more minutes. After a bit, your dad musters up a brave smile and pulls out a little box tied with a piece of gardening twine. Happy alert birthday, my little rutabaga. Rutabaga? You know what it is before you open it. Your old medallion. The one your dad made with the sun on it to represent Earth. It was broken during the attack. In all the chaos, you didn't even notice, but your dad did and made you a new one. It's just like you remembered a similar design, but with a wormhole this time, to represent Vertumna. You thank him and squint at the swirling wormhole still barely visible in the brightening sky. It's so massive and awe-inspiring this time of year, but it always seems to herald disaster. You're happy to watch it fade and into the daylight. Your dad slaps you on the back. What a birthday, huh? Here's hoping they all get better from here. You both head back downstairs to the wreckage of the canteen, where they've put up a temporary roofing with whatever tarps and scraps could be found. The colony nanoprinters, the few that still run, have been working day and night to replace the necessi necessities of life. But larger construction projects are going to take some time. They need replicators. Guys, it's a trick. Aunt Anne has co coaxed the kitchen nano printers into making soy gruel and pressed bars life-sustaining but depressing you and the other colonists eat your breakfast in stony silence as you mentally prepare for the day chief administrator seek has taken over as interim governor until the council can elect someone new last week they had a mass funeral for everyone who died there's talk of turning the stratospheric's destroyed front half into a memorial shrine after everything useful has been salvaged there's still so much to do really anything to do this month I think it's all the same dialogue so let's just um, go back here I don't know why I would help rebuild after I said I wasn't doing this 
You are assigned to help out in geoponics. The agriculturalists have been hard at work trying to salvage what they can of the ruined fields and the destroyed greenhouses, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Your dad has taken over as chief cultivator. Succeeding your mom was already difficult for him, and now there's this, but he's never been the kind of guy to hide from hard work. Uh, but he's been pretty distant lately. Cal's working in geoponics too, of course. Hey, Solana, there's lots of stuff to do. What do you want to work on? Let's uh, rebuild the animal pens. The pens only suffered minor damage during the attack. Weirdly, most of the damage seems to have come from inside the pens, as if the normally tame animals had been stirred into a frenzy. Tangent is also here, though it's not to help hammer and nail things. She's studying the animals, trying to figure out what could have influenced them. She takes blood and hair samples and readings as some sort of complicated brain scanning device. Interesting is all she says, not explaining her findings to you and Cal, or Cal. Everyone is worried that this will be the final nail in the coffin for your food supply after the famine last year. You try not to think about it too hard, instead focusing on just doing what you can to help rebuild. Work time. Okay. Hmm. We'll just override that. Yeah. Nice. You're eating in the mess tents when you hear something. Rumbling. Your bowl and cutlery start rattling. People look around in alarm. Could it be another attack? So soon? You begin to hear shouting from outside. Someone runs into the tent. There's something falling from the sky, they shout. It's on fire. You join the crowd of people, leaving your temporary structures to gather in the colony square. People are squinting up into the milky, quiet sunlight, pointing and gesturing wildly. It's impossible to miss the thing hurtling towards you from space, like a great big ball of fire coming straight for you. Is this it? Is this the end? After all you've been through? A meteor is going to land in the middle of your already ruined colony and kill you all. Mars grabs your shoulder. It's another ship! Look, look, it's another spaceship from Earth! Excitement ripples through the crowd. Could it be? You stare up, unbelieving at the rapidly approaching ship. The flames of its entry into the atmosphere dissipate, but a thick column of greasy black smoke trails behind it. Soon you can hear the whistle of it ripping through the atmosphere at terminal velocity. That is not a controlled descent. It's an enormous ship coming at you way too fast. The ship's reverse thrusters fire, trying to slow it down so it doesn't smash into a billion pieces when it hits the planet. Everyone scatters to take cover. You crouch behind some rocks, throw your arms over your head, and squeeze your eyes shut. You hear the massive spaceship touching down in geoponics, plowing through the fields and grinding over what was left of the greenhouses. You're thrown to the ground from the force of the impact as shrapnel and small rocks zing past your head. It grinds along like some roaring monster, cutting a great scar through the colony and kicking up an enormous cloud of dust. Finally, the ship comes to a creaking, shuddering halt. You and the other colonists carefully crawl out of your hiding places, coughing and rubbing your eyes. The new ship is half buried and obscured by dust, but you can tell it's from Earth. You squint to make out stenciled letters. Helio pause. A hatch opens in its side and silhouettes begin to emerge. Silhouettes with guns. Soldiers mark out, march out of the dust and quickly surround all of the remaining colonists. More soldiers form two parallel lines from the ship to the square. Their guns in parade rest, and a lone figure strides down the center towards you. Greetings, fugitives of Earth, the man says, spreading his hands wide. A dismayed murmur ripples through the crowd. The adults exchange significant looks. Chief Engineer Instance tries to slip out of the crowd, but she's stopped by the line of soldiers. The man smiles. He has a broad, easygoing smile that doesn't match the threatening aura of the soldiers nor the smoking ruin of the ship behind him. I am Commander Lum, he says proudly. As captain of the Heliopause, I have come to render aid and bring you to justice. 
Let's try to sneak away. The heliopause soldiers have the colonists surrounded and shove you gently, but forcefully, back into the crowd. Let's uh, play with my hollow bomb. Well, you may be stuck here, but they can't make you listen. You tune out the pomp and pointless adult talk. Yada yada. Governor Utica knew this ship was coming. Blah blah. Now this new guy Lum will be governor? And he's some kind of space cop? But whatever. All adults are basically the same. And equally boring. The crowd disperses slowly and the council members follow Lum back into the heliopause. Presumably to talk about the future of the colony. You hope. Track down your friends. So, uh, what do you think about these new people? They're just gonna boss us around. Tangent nods. They don't live here. They don't know what it's like. They're just gonna swoop in and act like they, they're better than us. Did you see what they were doing to Instance? The entire colony, now twice as many of you, sets to working on salvaging the wreckage of the heliopause, tearing it down and combining it with the stratospheric's remaining engine section. Spirits are high, though these new colonists from the Heliopause aren't like any people you've met, ever met before. With their uniforms and weapons, they're more like an invading force than a rescue. You aren't sure what this means for the colony, or for your future. Be quiet! As the dust settles, you rebuild your, new, your colony around this new ship, the Heliopause. The new arrivals, soldiers mainly, are aloof at first. Many see you as fugitives. Together you build new walls, living quarters, greenhouses, and a massive bunkered garrison. The Stratos Engineering Wing is the only reminder of your old colony. The Heliopause bought, brought enough rations for another five years, as well as a rich seed bank and working hydroponics. Finally, an end to the slow starvation you've felt for years. They also have more guns and explosives than you've ever seen in your life. Even the ship has guns. A full stomach, a roof over your heads, and the promise of safety convinces most strato colonists to accept the Helios. In turn, the Helios decide that you criminals pose little threat. A grudging peace is brokered between the two groups. You decide they aren't so different, really. There are even Helio children, born among the stars, just like you. After a month of hard work, you and your dad move into your new quarters, and you have your own bedroom for the first time in your life. You place a picture of your mother on the shelves beside your bed. You step out onto your very own balcony to watch the new colony, its grounds bursting with so many strangers and strange new ideas. You feel something rising in your chest that you haven't felt in some time. Hope. Excitement. What will the new day bring? You better get out there and find out. Let's rush outside to meet the day. Oh, look at these cuties hanging out. That new kid, the dog boy Rex, showed me how to play this. Um, okay. He's playing a game. What's up, Tammy? Tammy stands at the door of the lounge, looking under the colony where the geoponics domes are under reconstruction. Oh, hello, she says when she realizes you're watching her. Um, do you speak to Cal very much? Does he ever uh, talk about me? Oh, forget I said that. Ooh, somebody's got a crush. <gasps> Newbies! Look how cute she is! You've seen Nomi Nomi around since the Heliopause landed. They're around your age and barely a meter and a half tall, only coming up to your shoulder. You've never seen anyone dress as strangely as they do. They. Ugh, their eyes, their hair, they're so cute. Their outfit? Hi. Their voice is high-pitched and quick. I'm Nomi Nomi. It's short for nomination. They do a little twirl and bow. You introduce yourself and ask what they do for fun. Well, kind of a bit of everything. I like designing outfits and reading manga and learning about dinosaurs and cool xenofauna and robots and aliens and, oh, of course, watching anime and playing Laser Fable, of course. Mostly lately I play Laser Fable. It's so fun to play it outside in a great big endless outdoors. 
and we know me dances in a circle, waving their arms and gesturing at your surroundings. Let's uh, challenge them to a game of laser fable. You're on. Nomi Nomi helps you install it on your hollow palm and explains the rules. Laser Fable is an augmented reality game where you bounce hologram lasers off real objects nearby. It's speed based, so you're running around and bumping into each other, and there are extended house rules about when it's legal to block each other's lasers. A little combat challenge. Uh, let's see. What should I. Let's just do that. Oof. Well, I think we'll be okay. Plus one for for each gem. Value is wild. Um, yeah, let's do this and what am I doing? These guys. Not doing so hot here. Goal 33. I don't know if I can uh, hit that. We'll use these three uh, yellow guys. I mean, all the physical ones get a plus. The yellow ones are still better, though. We'll give up. I don't need to get stressed about a game of laser fable. Pay up, sister. Oh, it's just one kudos. Nomi explains that the Helio kids always play laser fable for kudos to make it count. Just one kudos, since this wasn't a ranked tournament tournament game. It's just one. There's fair. All right, dog boy. The colony is full of new people. Everywhere you look, you see a stranger. It's disorienting after growing up in a closed spaceship. You never expected to meet uh, any other humans that weren't made here on Vertumna. You bump straight in to one of those new people while you're jogging through the colony. Oh, he's so cute. Um, oof. He laughs and holds you steady, brushing the imaginary dust off of you and giving you a wide fanged smile. Hey, it's one of the kids from the Heliopause. You think his name is Rex? Hi, hi, hello, wow. Smooth Solana, real smooth. Hi, my name's Rex. You managed to get out a hello? You aren't quite sure why he's having such an effect on your ability to speak or even think, but he doesn't mind. You notice he's wiggling his dog ears. They can really move independently. God, I love everything about him. Rex put his hands, hand against his cheek, looking cute and lost. Hey, uh, since I'm new here, do you think you could help me find the construction yard? I thought I might apply for a job there. Uh, I'll take you there. You walk him over to command. Next, next playthrough, I'm going to flirt with everybody. Everything's moved around since the Heliopause landed, but the construction yard is still in co command where it always was. At the entrance, you meet Mars, filing her nails, and looking like she's waiting for someone. Why, hello, cutie. Where did you come from? He looks her up and down and grins. I'm just an angel who fell from the sky, darling. You try not to gag as the two of them flirt. You give a loud ahem and point Rex toward the construction yard. He looks back at Mars over his shoulder and winks as he leaves. Things are getting real flirtatious in year six here. Those hormones are raging. You approach Mars, who's deep in negotiations of some kind with Tangent. When Tang sees you over Mars's shoulder, she points and says your name. Thank you, forces of chance and chaos, Tang mutters. Slipping away as Mars's attention turns to you. She's your problem now, Solana. Mars pretends not to hear her. Solana, you're looking hideous today, darling. Luckily, I'm doing makeovers on fashion advice, free of charge. All right, that's, that's the thing we're doing now. Oh God, <laughs> sure. She's the weed next S dialogue. Come with me. I've been working on these designs for weeks. They're fresh off the printer, and I'm 
dying to see how they look on a regular person like yourself. Mars's room is a riot of sparkling fabric. My first fashion line is all about dressing for the seasons of Vertumna, Mars says as she ushers you inside. Yellow and angular for dust, airy and pink for pollen, stuff like that. If we ever make it back to Earth, I want to be known as the visionary who brought Vertumna home. That's a great idea. I love how much blue and yellow there is in this game. It's like, so many people have blue and yellow. I feel like, like, my hair is blue with the blonde, Rex has got some blue and yellow going on, I think New Nomi also has blue and yellow, maybe a bit? They're more pink, but they do have a little. I know. Mars indicates the pile of outfits on her bed. Well, what are you waiting for? Chop chop! You try on outfit after outfit, letting Mars scrutinize your silhouette and bearing. She seems genuinely focused on how the clothing performs. Finally, you finish trying on all the outfits. I think the glow jumpsuit is the winner. Go ahead and put it back on. Then we'll do your hair and makeup. You sit on your, her bed as Mars pulls out her box of cosmetics. A day look. Or something more bold for nighttime. Um, something flashy. A woman after my own heart. Mars does your makeup efficiently, then pulls out a bottle of bright blue nail polish. Oh, heck yeah! One more thing, and the look is complete. Mars paints your nails and humming, humming, uh, humming tunelessly while she works. And voila! That was fun, I guess. Um, I guess we'll say that. I'm a big nail polish person. I haven't painted right now, but I think after I'm done recording this, I'm gonna change it. I have this really cute fall nail polish. It's actually called Fall AF and it's like it's like a flaky polish if you're familiar and it's got like lots of orangey yellow colors and it just looks like fall leaves. And I'm recording this video the day before the first day of fall so I just think it'll be perfect to wear. Um, and back to the video. <laughs> this was fun. Mars smiles and caps the bottle of nail polish. And informative, I hope. Blue is definitely your color. She's not wrong. I ever I always look good in blue stuff. That's like the one color I rely on. See, look, look at this blue and yellow. The the blue and yellow pals. They are less so I think I think they have a little bit of blue. You got some blue and yellow. You've got like uh you, you got like a greenish tint going on like you got green and um, I guess you also got purple both of those things have blue in them um, this is gonna be a long video I think who's oh this blue and yellow well kind of a bluish green and yellow this looks more skittery than usual, looking around at the new defenses. There's too many people here now, he mutters. Too much noise, too many mouths to feed. Whatever's out there isn't going to be happy with us. Alright, let's go say hi to Dad. Who wants to talk to us? Even though it hurts, you find yourself wandering over to Geoponics. It feels not good to be here, in the place your mom loved and ultimately gave her life to. But not not good either. It feels like when you have a bruise and you can't stop yourself from pushing on it because the pain reminds you the injury is real. Like your mom dying is this huge invisible wound and poking at it forces you to feel something instead of just being numb. Your dad is taking time off of work. Your parents work double and triple shifts during the growing season this year and now that it's over it just feels so cruel. When people work hard they should be able to look back on what they did and feel proud. Instead, there's just this huge gap where your mom should be. You find your dad sitting in your mom's personal garden. It's miraculously starting to grow again, despite being trampled flat during that last attack, and neglected during the famine before that. Still, various retumnin flowers are starting to sprout, and as well, as well as hardier earth ones like dandelions. Your dad looks up and musters a smile. He pats the bench beside, beside him. Let's talk to him. 
He falls start a few times. It's almost impossible to think of something to say when there's this magnitude of grief between you. He gives you time. When it's obvious that you want to talk but don't know what to say, he takes your hand into in his two larger ones. Did I ever tell you about how your mom and I started dating? You knew they grew up together in the first colony on Earth, but nothing about their relationship. He smiles and looks at the garden as he remembers. I always thought she was too cool for me. Things were, well, people didn't like us much on Earth, and she was always kind of a bruiser, always ready to pop off, even when she was your age. She and Rhett were the same back then, he reminisces. I always thought they were going to end up together. Then your mom got injured when the first colony was attacked. I was working part-time in the clinic, and I guess that's when I re she realized I liked her. We had to apply to get on the stratospheric. We'd only been seeing each other a few weeks, so I was surprised when she said we should apply as a couple. They wanted all different kinds of family groups. Single people, couples who could have kids or couldn't, triads and quads. But we all had to be young, and there weren't many teenagers willing to commit to being, uh, you know, mated pair. It upped our chances of being picked. She wanted to get off that planet more than anything. I don't think she realized she'd fall in love with me until we were already in space. Lucky for me, right? Your dad shakes his head fondly. There aren't many people like your mom, kiddo. You nod, surprised to feel a tr tear trickle down your cheek. There's so much you don't know about her and what she was like, more than just being your mom. It's really hitting you that she was a person before you knew her, and now you'll never know her like that. There's a past you'll never fully know, just like there's a future that she never will. Your dad puts an arm around your shoulders, and you sit like that for a long, long while. Egg! Don't let me forget to give that to someone this year. Alright, Nemi. Nemi doesn't notice you approach. She's focused intently on the document, on her hollow palm, chewing on her, chewing on her nails as she reads through the small print. Oh, hey, Solana. I, I was just looking over some stuff. The Helios have got all these documents you have to sign if you want to. She trails off, biting her lip. I'm going to sign up to join up with the Helios, she says hesitantly. But there's a part where if you're under 18, you have to have a parent's permission just to sign up as a reservist and... My mom's going to be so mad. So mad. Like, she's probably going to cry and it'll be this whole stupid thing and... But I gotta do it. I just gotta do something. Who cares what your mom thinks? Yeah, you're right. I should just ask her right now and get it over with. Besides, if she doesn't let me sign up, I'm just going to run into battle the next time the aliens come and... It'd be better if I knew what I was doing. I'm not going to get caught off guard again. When they come back, I want to be able to fight with everything I got. No one else has to die like Kong. Nemi gestures angrily to dismiss the hollow screen and puts her face in her hands. She crouches down small, pressing her head against her knees and takes an anguished breath. Goddamn aliens. Bunch of dumb, dinosaur-looking assholes. You don't have to do this. Maybe, but... This is my best option. I'm not going to let them take away anyone else. <laughs> Alright, dude. This new boy from the Heliosphere is a couple years older than you. He's very handsome, and the missing arm gives him a heroic, battle-scarred vibe. He stands tall and ready for action, even though it's a normal, boring day. The other recruits milling around the garrison give him a wide, respectful berth. He sees you staring and gives you a curt nod. My name is Vase, Lieutenant Olivacious. Okay, he says, considering you with a glint of challenge in his eye. And you are? Um. I just want to have some fun before I die. His expression doesn't change. Is that right? He says with the air of a boy who's hard to impress. Nice to meet you, Solana. I hear it's been a rough couple of years for the colony. Lucky thing our heliopause came along just in time. Don't worry. We have some of the best soldiers. The very best. We'll keep the colony, the colony safe. Are you one of those best soldiers? We train as a team, but... 
Yes, I've won more than my share of zero G judo matches and virtual rif riflery tournaments, even competing against adults. Being planet side is totally different. You tell Vase that firing, firing a virtual gun is nothing compared to running for your life down through the jungle while a wild unisaur hunts you down. A unisaur, Vase says, leaning forward a little, his eyebrows raise. Did you actually say something to interest him? That sounds like a fun sport. I'd like to try it sometime. Okay, dick. Mushlog. Does Tang want to talk? We already talked to Tang. Okay. Can I go anywhere new yet? Uh, outside the colony? How do I leave the colony now? This is where I leave the colony. Mushlog. Okay. Um, what do I want to do? I think I'm going to wait till the next season to go exploring. I don't know if that's going to make any difference, but I do want to work on some skills, I think. I have a present for you. Oh, these guys should all show up now. I think I figured out. Okay, you're mid dust. You are early pollen. Your birthday is right now, Rex. Shoot. Um, do I have anything fun for him? He likes cake. I don't know that I want to buy Rex a cake right now. That's going to use up like all of my kudos. Um, vase mid wet okay I think I should work on my combat or my animal skill help him with the animals what's is there a thing I think there's a thing that does both xenobotany it's probably in um over here uh, combat and animals plus one friendship with anemone, anemone and vase Animal. we're doing good with perception all right let's do some defense training there are so many people training in self-defense today that you have to break out into stations what do you want to work on today cap capor cap i don't know what this is uh, Nemi's been studying videos of other martial arts and wants to learn some sweet dance moves to show off in class. She needs a partner and you jump at the chance. Brett watches you, a skeptical, skeptical, skeptical look on his face. What does this have to do with self-defense, he says. The point of all this isn't to have fun. It's to learn how to not die. Whatever, you're too busy learning how to do a sick handspin to pay attention. He rolls his eyes and stalks away, muttering about how you're wasting your time. You feel more in control of your body, which is undoubtedly going to help you in an actual fight. Hell yeah. Dancing. Good stuff. Okay. Let's just throw out one, two, three, four, five. Wait. Why are you here? Did I put you here? I do not remember putting you here. I guess I did put you here. Win! We won. Good stuff. Moving on into mid pollen. This music is sweet. Nobody wants to talk. I guess maybe we should try and do something on the stressful side and then rest? I don't know. What can I do in here? Deliver supplies plus organization and perception. Do I want to up my organization at all? Not really. I guess persuasion maybe. Work in the depot. Depot. I don't 
don't know. Let's do something that adds 15 stress. Because I feel like I gotta use... I don't know how I want to do this. Actually, maybe I'll just go with minimal stressful things. And I'll, I'll take a break during... Dust. Uh, let's let's work in the depot. Depot. You're scrolling through a hollow novel behind the desk when Tangent comes in. She pauses and looks uncomfortable when she sees you and Mars looking at her and quickly disappears into the shelves. You and Mars shrug. A few minutes later, Tank comes up to the counter and drops a fistful of candy. She shifts from foot to foot as you ring her up, jostling up and down and rubbing her stomach. I also need something from behind the counter, she says quietly. Some medicine. You ask her what she needs and she mumbles the name. You can't hear her. Can you repeat that? She mumbles it again a little louder. Mars stifles, stifles a giggle. I'm sorry, what? Tang rolls her eyes. Stars! I need fart pills, okay? The stupid alien bacteria and all the, the weird native food makes my stomach upset. OMG. You have blue gut? Really? Tang the perfect has blue farts? Tang crosses her arms and looks miserable. You give Mars a questioning look. Blue gut, Mars says. You know, when you keep farting and farting all this, like, blue, dusty stuff? Mars leans over the counter to get a better look at Tang's backside. <laughs> oh no. White was not the best color to wear today, Tangent. Your bl butt's as blue as T Solana's hair. Mars cackles as Tang anxiously cranes her neck to look at her rear. Liar. Just give me the pills, please. I don't want to talk about my stupid body. Be sensitive and nice. You let Tang- oh no. You let Tangent know that you're very sorry this is happening to her. Blue gut is in a comfortable condition. You tell her, but it doesn't make her a bad person. You let her know if that there's anything you can do to help. You'll be there for her, because that's what friends are for. This approach seems to make Tang even more miserable. She takes her order and rushes out of the depot as soon as you're done. Get to work. Okay, we're gonna have one blue card. We have a lot of fives. This one's unchangeable though, so maybe we go... I don't know how I want to organize this. Like, I want to... Okay, let's just do this. Perfect. Got a little organization, a little creativity. I just say I wanted to try and get all my skills up to 20. But I also want to max out my... Um... Tough... These, the red guys, physical skills. I gotta work on combat and animals, definitely. Do you want to work on engineering too, though? Well, does anybody want to chat this month? Is there any new stuff I can do? Oh, this is where school stuff is now. Engineering and reasoning would be nice to increase. Creativity, empathy. That's a next playthrough thing. Next playthrough, we're going to be BFFs with Mars and Tammy. And we're going to max out our yellow social skills. And we're going to flirt with everyone. We're just going to be a big people person. We're going to be totally the opposite of me in real life. So yeah, let's do combat and animals, I think. What does lookout duty do? Perception. We're good with perception. Sports ball does bravery and toughness. We're pretty good with toughness too. Let's yeah, let's just do defense training. Security Chief Rhett interrupts your afternoon training to address the group. Nemi perks up. This seems important. Since the original colony was destroyed. We have needed every skilled security officer we can find to defend our home. And now, with Governor Lum's blessing, age is no longer a requirement. 
we are looking for young recruits to join the ranks of the defense squads. This is a serious job. You'll be soldiers, not little kids learning self-defense or peering down from the safety of the walls. You will be in danger. You need to be brave and you need and know your way around a weapon. Go pound sand, warmonger. <laughs> he goes a shade of red, commonly seen in Watado bods. Get out of my face, pacifist. I don't have time for your bullshit. Ooh. Okay. I'm gonna go all red, guys. We're gonna go, let's see. You, 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 you. Perfect. Super goal. We super gold it. Getting good at combat. We need to do something more. Well, I guess our animal skill is already higher than combat. Um, we're catching up. Early dust. Okay, it is now time to venture outside the colony. Shoot, I did. Um, I need to. I need a little refresher on people's birthdays. Anemone, you're an early duster. Uh, late duster. Base is a mid wet. No, we know me as mid dust. Okay, we we got our our dusts. Um. What do I need? I need 80. Have a Xeno egg, girl. Thank you for remembering my birthday, Solana. It's hard without calm here. And Emmy. What is our friendship level? 88. We're definitely maxing out our- We have five- Well, like four and a half years to max out our friendship. We're gonna do it. Uh, let's see. What's up? Ooh, there's a thing I can do. I can hug Rex, like, all the time. And uh, sometimes it'll increase our friendship, so I get, like, free friendship increases. Rex folds you into his arms, bending his whole body to you. He smells warm and a little spicy, like clean sweat and sunshine. It's a good hug, the kind that makes you instantly just a little more relaxed. This is like petting the dog. This is this game's version of... You can pet the dog. You can hug the dog boy. <laughs> Yellow flower. And let's go. What do I want to do? Forage in the valley or survey the plains? Survey the plains will give us an animal boost. So let's do that. I'm not sure when I'm going to unlock another thing to do. Chief Surveyor Utopia stops you and dis near the depot. Feel that? You can feel kind of an ominous distant thumping pulsing regularly through the ground. If you stand still, you can feel it vibrate up into your own body too, like a massive global pulse. Um, I reckon it's naturally occurring, she concludes, but it's giving me the willies all the same. You two better check it out. Mind you stick together and take readings on the way, in case it's dangerous. You and Dis look at each other excited. Um, we're following the thump. Let's follow the sound. Uh, okay. One card becomes a three. Uh, let's, let's use this guy. And these guys. Mm -mm. If this has the highest value, I don't know if this is gonna work. If uh, it's not gonna work. Oh, whatever this card is is gonna become a three. So this card is just not gonna help us. Plus one for each gem on other cards, which is should save for the next thing. But also I could use all the you know Actually I I'm not sure what the best way to go about this set of cards is. I'd like to put all the social cards together. But I don't think that's in the cards. <laughs> 
This round kind of sucks. But whatever. Uh... Plus one for each gem. Plus... Do you want to use the red cards? Maybe I'll go this, 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 this. All right, cool. I need to reheat my coffee. You find a machine, an ancient broken down machine, like a small pyramid shaped building made from some kind of dark stone or bone that lo al looks almost like it grew that way. Except it isn't broken. It's just so very old and overgrown. It looks more like a pile of rubble and roots than a building or engine or whatever it was. Still, a thumping noise comes from inside it. The vibrations are strong here, making your guts feel weird. You don't notice it at first, but there's a curious path on the ground moving away from the machine. A line half a meter wide where the dirt is a little more worn and bare. It heads off in a strange straight line to the west. Or coming from the west? Could animals have made this? Or the thumper itself? Uh, well, I guess we're just marveling at it. You run your hand over its pitted, vibrating surface. How could something so unbelievably old still work? It's definitely not natural. You can even see something like writing carved deep into the not-quite rock. This starts making uns, 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 uh, noises under his breath to the beat of the thumper. It's a pretty sick bee. Eventually, you head back to share your findings with Utopia. Totally an alien civilization, Dis insists. I suppose, maybe. You said it looks ancient, right? Perhaps there could have been another civ here long ago. We have found other signs, but nothing active like this. It seems- Ooh, we unlocked some stuff. It seems to be pointing west or receiving something. There's some right ugly ridge lines out there that have kept us from checking that direction, but- we got gliders and motivation. That's half the battle. She makes a note in her hollow palm. I'll open up the Western wrestling ridges for surveyors. <sighs> Whew, say that three times fast. Western wrestling ridges, Western wrestling ridges, Western wrestling wish ridges. Whew. This is right, it's definitely aliens. Actually, they wouldn't be aliens because this would be their planet. We are the aliens. When you report for surveying duty, Nomi Nomi is here. It's their first day as a sur surveyor. Oh, you two know each other already? That'll make this easier. So long, I'd like you to keep an eye on Nomi while you're out there. I'm going to assign you to the same regions for the next little while. Just make sure they don't wander into a nest of snap bladders, okay? Yay, hooray. See, they do have the, they have blue in their hair and yellow. Nomi cheers and gives you a high five. So does, um, Utopia has some blue and yellow. As Utopia explains to Nomi Nomi and some other new Helio survivors about surveying tools, Nomi starts to get bored and wanders a little ways from the group. You see it happening, but are powerless to stop them from tripping and nearly landing into a nest of Popeye eggs. They're just about to crash in the delicate spun glass cocoon when Utopia materializes as if out of nowhere and scruffs them back by, by the back of the collar. Nomi, pay attention. Nomi giggles, like they don't even realize the danger of being stampeded by the upset hot eyes beginning to gather around. Utopia ushers them back to the group before things can get trampoly. Nomi asks a million questions about the eggs. Are they edible? Do they have hard shells or soft? What is the cocoon made out of? How long until they hatch? <sighs> Just get out of here, you two, she says, before the cute little varmints turn ugly. Alright. Well... I guess we'll explore. I I want to have minimal stress when I start the next uh, exploration. So I guess we'll just try and get as stressed as possible here, and then go home, rest, go to the next area. Plus one the card becomes physical. Physical. That's not the right. Wait. Do, do, do. 
do 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 Uh, I don't like this. I don't like that at all. Although I guess, uh... That works. You are unchangeable. The, um, the unchangeable Nemi. What card do I want to become red? Keep working those muscles. Sure. Oh. What do you mean push through? Oh, okay. <laughs> Keep between rounds. What card do I want to become red this time? Probably one of you guys. Let's do you, you. Oh, maybe not. Uh, it's it's fine, right? It doesn't matter. We got a super goal. I probably should have read that dialogue. I hope you have time to pause it and read it. I think it said it might have said something interesting. I don't know for sure though. The ground here is oddly familiar. Some kind of smooth rock covered in lichens and tiny plants. Is it alive? Like that big rock creature you found before? Let's uh, carefully move over it. Getting some good stuff going here. Card becomes two. So let's put you, uh, let's do you, you, you. And you, um, we're not going to use this one. I don't want to add to the stress if I don't have to. So you guys go there and you guys, oh, we super gold again. After cautiously walking around it, on it for a few minutes and observing quietly, you realize the ground is alive. It's rumbling very slightly. What you thought was just a rock slowly opens. It's an eye. It stares at you dreamily and you stare back, fascinated. This must be a very ancient creature. It's so vast. It's completely merged into the surroundings. There are even trees growing out of it. A little animal, like a moth with wet, huge webbed feet, lands between you and the massive eye and starts preening. The eye dilates to focus on the moth. Then it slowly closes again in what you thi think might be contentment. After a minute, you feel a faint rumble under your feet. Regular breathing in and out. Snoring. You creep off the creature, careful not to wake it again. Alright, how are we doing? We got uh, 80 stress, so we probably got time. We could probably do one more thing unless we get a relaxing moment. At the uh, edge of the, one of the circular ponds, something sparkling catches your eye. Well, everything around here sparkles, but this thing really catches your eye. The water in the lake is a little deep and milky, though, and you can't see the bottom. It's completely still, almost too still, and so perfectly circular. You remember you've been warned about getting too close to these pools. Let's bravely approach the water. Um... Ooh, we got a minus one stress. I don't think that's gonna help us at all, but sure, why not? All cards under two become two. Okay, we got two, two, two. Let's use this one because it'll it'll be the highest value. And we're gonna do uh I don't know. I don't know what the best pairing- I guess it doesn't matter, we're gonna hit the goal no matter what, so we're just gonna throw you out there, throw you out there, throw you out there, you, you, perfect. 
Minus one stress. You aren't scared of some pond or whatever might live in it. You march up to the edge, keeping your eyes on the shiny prize and paw around in the snow looking for that shiny whatever it is. Looks like it's a pretty crystal just sitting on the ground. Good find. We got a nice lovely crystal and I think it is uh, time to go home because we're gonna get overstressed. Can I grab this mush log first? All right. Yeah, we're gonna go home. We're gonna have a nice little rest somewhere. Not sure where we're gonna rest yet. We'll see if I get friendship, plus one friendship with any of the newbies. But I also might just wanna increase my friendship with this some more. We'll check my friendship level. <sighs> Let's go home. Let's go home. Cool. Oh, it's festival time. Perfect. I won't have to take a month to rest. All right. The Virtue Malian Festival is a welcome day of normalcy in an other otherwise chaotic year. Despite some lingering rival rivalry between the two factions, Virtue Malia is a chance for the Helios and the Stratos to come together and appreciate the bounty of the planet. At least, that's what the adults say. As Governor Lum takes the stage to address the colony, you can't help but notice the crowd has segregated itself according to their ship of origin. Rex shoots you away from over on the shadow side, and Nomi makes a silly face. Vase is surrounded by other young soldiers, all looking sharp in their Heliopause uniforms. With Anemone standing beside you, you wonder if the two ships will ever feel like one colony. Fanfare plays over the square's announcement system. Lum's honor guard do a complex drill with their drone rifles. Greetings, people of Vertum now, Lum says, his voice ringing out over the square. We may be far from our beautiful Earth, but we can still celebrate and be thankful for what we have here. We've worked hard to save this beleaguered little colony from the brink of destruction and should be proud of our work. Helios cheer. Your side of the square is more quiet. I know some of you have been asking, Lum, how are you going to do it all by yourself? How are you going to run the colony, solve everyone's problems, turn this planet into a paradise, and look this good? Lum strikes a pose to a smattering of polite applause. Well, I have the answer for you, he continues. The old council made a lot of bad choices, like illegally leaving Earth. But I believe in second chances, so I've appointed the original department heads to my own council, Lum's Council 2.0. Better not disappoint me, <laughs> laughs and makes finger guns at the department heads at the foot of his plat podium. Stay on your toes, Stra Stratos. I also want to promise everyone here today that we're going to make Vertumna safe for humans, Lum says. The next time those bastard Xenos attack, we're going to be blow them away. Blow them to so many pieces, there won't be enough left to wipe off our boots. We're, we've already got the defenses. He says, gesturing broadly to the new, taller, thicker walls. And we're building building homes for everyone. Homes where people can raise children again, knowing that our military men and women are keeping us safe. Big cheers from both sides this time. Some of the colonists around you even have tears in their eyes, especially those who lost family in the last attack. Lum goes on for a while, lionizing the Heliopause's military strength and casting subtle digs at your failed colony experiment. Finally, the crowd dis disperses disperses to set up the square for the afternoon festivities, some traditional and some new. At the tables, Aunt Anne and the kids are setting out the spread for dinner. There's an unimaginable amount of food thanks to the Heliopause's huge ration surplus, and the piles upon piles of Xeno meat from the hunting parties for those who can stomach it. Anne is all smiles, clearly making an effort to move on as Lum mandated, despite still mourning her lost son come. But not even the festive atmosphere can force a smile on Anemi's face. Come on, it's... no. <sighs> Who do these Helio jerks think they are? Right? This Lum guy is a tool. Did you hear what he said about us? How crass. Like, have some respect. This arrives, carrying a big tureen of stew. And now they're just taking over and everybody is okay with this? The adults are bigger cowards than I thought. Mars looks at Dis in shock that they agree on something for once. The chime sounds to announce that the square is set up for the annual competitions. What do you choose this year? 
Ooh, I can do the bake off. Ditching. Oh, let's do the bake off. The bake off is a new challenge this year in celebration of the great surplus of food. Today's theme is chili, spicy bean stew. Not pixie beans though. Tammy and Cal both compete. Tammy makes a simple but pleasing stew, and Cal adapts, adapts a gourmet earth dish with alien ingredients. They're very comfortable working around each other in the kitchen, always coming over to give help and encouragement. All right. Um, I highly doubt we're going to win this challenge, but we're going to try. Ooh, there are three gem cards. I should, uh, I can't, I can't organize them so that I can use all of them at once. Gosh, I really want to. Maybe I will. I don't know what to do. Like, I could get hit two of them, I guess. But I also want to pair up the combat cards. It's not a big deal if we don't pair up the combat cards. This isn't a combat thing. So let's just do this. Uh, oh, I don't want to use that one. This and this. I'm not going to win this challenge. <laughs> Plus two if in the first or last plane. Um, all cards under two become two, so maybe all strength cards. This, this, this. We're nowhere near close enough. Um, plus one if this has the highest value, plus one to a card to the left. So, I don't know. Oh man, we're so far away from the challenge. So far away. No skill changes. Your seven alarm napalm chili is a hit. No one can take more than a few bites of it. For some reason, though, you don't win. Weird. After the festivities, the mood in the colony is a lot lighter. You see people smiling easier and often see mixed groups of Helios and Stratos socializing together. Feels like the first time people have actually let themselves relax. Alright. A little relaxed. Um... See if anybody wants to talk. Let's give Rex a hug and our um, mid duster a present. Ugh, is that Vase? Is Vase the mid duster? Mid wet. Um, Rex or Nomi? 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 Mid dust. We're gonna give Nomi a nice little. Crystal Cluster. Happy birthday to me! I can't believe you remembered! Thank you. Sure thing, Nomi. Nomi and Rex both have these cute little hearts on their cheeks. Maybe I'll draw one on my... Oh, let's see if I have any usable eyeliner. I like almost never wear makeup. I like wearing it sometimes, but I just like can't be bothered. Somebody's screeching their tires out there. Okay. Alright, alright. Let's just head out. Go to... All events have respawned. Oh, that's what I did here. There's a boss event. We're gonna start survey surveying the ridge. See how far we get in here. We may have time to do both boss events. I'm not sure. We do have five months left of things to do. Oh yes, funky place. The only way to the wrestling ridges is by glider. Part vehicle, part kite, and all adrenaline. You ran on the land on the rocky, broken up spine of the nearest ridge and nearly fall over when you look down at the plummeting slope into the basin below. You are a long way up. Whew. You handled that glider like a champ, Dis. You too, Solana. She peers down over the slope of the ridge. A lot more exciting than the swamps, right? I want you two to stick together out here. It's dangerous in those ancient convergent domain ruins. Convergent domain ruins? You look around. 
The landscape is nothing like it's like nothing you've ever seen before. Dry, cracked soil gives way to steep cliffs, and what little vegetation here is brittle and sharp. You can feel the dry air wick away the moisture in your lips. Wait, what the heck is that? Cute little nose doing on your cute little face. Who is the flirting with? This? Utopia? Glowing thing on the ground? Let's get this. You point it out. Meets me. You unearth the object. It's pulsing with light and warm to the touch. Hold up. Don't just go picking things up, Solana. It could be radioactive, you know? Utopia waves her hollow palm crystal over it and then checks her interface. Huh. Only a little. Whatever it is, it looks old. Like thousands of years old. We've been digging up glowing gadgets all over this re region, but got no clue what they're for. You hang on to that one. Maybe you'll figure it out. Oh, okay. And what is that crystal stuff way down below? Oh, those? They're all over the place. Be careful with them. Not sure if they're animal, vegetable, or mineral. There's a big island of them over there, like a glacier. It covers the whole damn place. Might be related to the convergent domain, but we ain't sure yet. And what's that stone structures in the distance? Well, there are buildings here. Traces of them, anyway. Maybe 10, 20,000 years old? We sure didn't put them there. This lights up at the prospect of doing alien archaeology. We've checked them out, but not thoroughly. Mostly just trying to get a feel of who lived there and why they ain't here no more. Based on some glyphs, we started calling them the D Convergent Domain. Whoever they are, they were, they built things to last. It ain't just arrowheads and cave paintings. There's real architecture, architecture, machines even. Wait, tell me more. I wish I had more to tell you. Most everything we found just poses new questions. The structures read more organic than anything. So does that mean they're gen genetech, genet, genetech, gen, gen, gene tech, gene tech was super advanced. As for this place, we think it was some kind of solar network for them. She says, squinting up at the two suns. Looking at it from above, you can see these big vines traveling up and down the ridges, like power lines. And there's hardly any plant life el elsewise, like they soaked up all the energy and made it a, de a desert. But what do they use that energy for? And if there's a civilization so big and so advanced on Rotumna, why can't we find more traces of it? Where are the cities? What were them thumpers for? And what happened to them all? She's right, that's a lot of questions. Maybe you can help find some answers. So anyway, there's ruins out there. The main thing we need you to survey while you're out here. But keep an eye out for anything else weird. Utopia claps the dust off her hands. Well, my job here is done. You're all set, kid. Try not to fall off a cliff. D Dis jumps back on his glider, too. As usual, he's going to scout on ahead and catch up with you later. Alright, let's get going. Let's check out the Western Wrestling Ridge. I don't think we're going to get very far. You haven't been down in the deepest crevices of the ridges, where the crystals grow thick and the air is stagnant and dead. It's already sweltering on the ridges, but in the chasms you can see the heat warping the air almost like it's a permanent fog. Utopia says the air is so thick and still that you can't even use your glider down there. At least one thing survives in the haze, though. When you take a break for lunch one day, you can see flickers of silver dart in and out of the fog, like ripples of light on a lake. As you unpack your tiffin box, the silver flashes come up out of the fog and begin to surround you. They're animals, eyeless, almost translucent creatures about the length of your arm, trailing meters long tentacles behind them. Their mournful hooting is magical and strange. You look them up on your hollow palm. Oh, air squid babies. Wait, air squid are predators. Oh no. Okay. I think we're gonna be okay. Plus two to a strength card. Let's just throw, um,. These guys out here. I don't think there's a way to make that a straight. Plus one to strength challenges. Uh, let's do three, three, three. Add that guy. Ugh, we gotta hit 30. Plus one for each gem. We don't have any gems. All strength cards under two become two. Let's do this and this. Uh Oh no, we're just gonna give up. I feel like this is gonna hurt, but... You fail to hide and shudder as a tentacle passes over you. Its owner stops and let out, lets out a curious squeak. The rest of the swarm stops as well and their tentacles begin to parse over the ground looking for you. 
You're not going to get eight today. You leave your tiffin and bolt, paying no heed to the noise you're making as rocks clatter down the sides of the side of the chasm. As you run, you swear you run right past someone. What? Where did he come from? Behind you, you think you hear him making a low hooting noise. By the time you realize the air squid are no longer chasing you, he's gone. <gasps> a mysterious stranger? Who could that be? And which way should we go? We are not going to make it very far. Um... The sun goes behind a cloud and you feel a light spattering of rain. It sizzles in the dry, hot ground around you, providing a little relief from the heat of the day. Then you realize you don't see a single cloud in the sky ahead of you, and it almost never rains in the western wrestling ridges. Plants here rely on nighttime dew for moisture. Let's just run. Uh, you bolt for cover with your hands thrown over your head. You don't even care what's up there, you just know that that, that was no rain. Oh boy, we do not have stress 84. We can probably do one more thing if we cannot relax. Uh, yeah. A beautiful little locust lands on your arm. It calmly washes its face with its forearms and vibrates its wings like it's cooling off. Ah, the poor little guy is all alone. Let's befriend it. Um... Ooh, a seven. Seven. Maybe we should save. Ugh. I don't have enough cards. Plus one for each unplayed card. Maybe I'll just do... Can I draw another card? Do I have a thing that draws another card? Yeah, I can draw another card. Okay. So I'm going to save the social cards for the last. And do... that Ooh, yeah let's do the plus one to all these guys and just throw out the rest of them perfect victorious no skill changes you look it up on your hollow palm it's a mask wing named because when it's frightened it opens its wings all the way and flips them forward making it look a, like a grimacing manticore scary but even scarier is how much they can eat they usually eat leafy plant matter but they're not above eating fabric wood hair or even skin they swarm in dust and in hot places like the ridge you see something out of the corner of your eye and look up from your no new friend oh hmm In the distance, you see a haze above the ground. It's the locusts, each one bigger than your fist. Those, these insectoids can eat their weight in under an hour. There are millions of them out there, and they'll be here soon. Your buddy t takes off to join its friends, and you gotta go. You make it to your glider in time, thankfully. You come back to this place later in the week. What foliage there had been, there had been, is now stripped bare. The only thing still standing are the crystals, glinting in the sunlight. All right. I think it's time to go home. Let's just make sure there's nothing else I can collect out here. Okay, collectible. We're actually getting pretty far out here. We might not be too far from a boss event, so maybe I will be able to do boss events in two areas this year. This is gonna be a long vid. Back to the colony. Hmm. I get a plus two in engineering for exploring this area. That's good. Give Rex his monthly hug. Hey, Solana, I'm thinking we should put a pool over there. Ooh, ooh, how about a dance floor? With giant booming speakers and blinking lights? And a disco ball. Coming in for another hug. Again? This is Cal? Mm hmm. Do I have, um. Something I can give him? Xeno egg. Or bobber fruit.
relaxing here gives us a dis friendship. There aren't new places to relax. Let's see. Friendship with Rex and Tammy. Rex is easy to get friendship with, but... Fifty-eight. Yeah, we could probably do with some more this friendship. Okay, can't relax here. Let's go ahead and give Cal. Uh, you pass a group of soldiers from the Heliopause, leave in the garden. One of them eyes you with disdain, but the rest ignore you. Inside, Cal is scowling as he rakes up a planting bed. His expression softens when he sees you, but not by much. Hey, Solana, did you see those jerks? They're always sniffing around here, trying to start a fight with me. I think the relator is that mouthy kid, Vase. Whatever, joke's on them. I ain't gonna play their little soldier game. Have a bobber fruit. Wow, that looks delicious. Thanks for the birthday gift, Solana. You know I love to eat. Ooh, friendship. Hey, Solana, what's going on? Oh, nothing. Just thinking about... I guess it's not like you can get me in trouble now. So, yeah, I uh, I used to have a pet. She was like a little pink caterpillar. I called her Socks. She lived in a trunk up in the storage barn. Nobody knew. I knew on my last playthrough. Because I became really good friends with Cal on my last playthrough. And I um, romanced Cal. Cal was my boyfriend. She didn't stay little forever. Eventually she got big, like real big, and I couldn't figure out what to feed her, so she ran away. I just hope she's doing okay wherever she is. That's what happened in my playthrough. We knew about her, but she still ran away. I don't know if that's preventable. Um, but yeah, let's go rest on the walls. Relax on the walls. The only spot of excitement this month was when you filled in for Nemi when she needed to use the bathroom, and just by chance, you happened to notice a small pack of Hopeye starting to chew through some cables. Nemi is a little peeved you got the accolades for spotting them, but it's not like she can complain. You weren't even supposed to be on lookout duty. Uh, why would I already want to forget a mysterious stranger? <laughs> Never want to forget a mysterious stranger. It's wet. It's wet. It's wet. It's dis and no, it's Mars's birthday. We are very happy right now. I found something you might like. I know you like. Do you like yellow flowers? They, we got improved friendship with her. Can I get, like, at least half friendship with everybody? <laughs> Maybe not Vase. Not really a fan of him. Although I guess I am going to be flirting with him on my next playthrough. Mushlog! You know? Uh, I'm going to hold off on- I'm not going to give you anything until your birthday. Let's survey the ridge. We got 13 events remaining. Um, hoping we can get to the boss event now. I, I think that's the only way I'll be able to explore the other area. I want to find this mysterious stranger though. You come across a particularly flat area, a large field of obsidian. Well, obsidian is the only word you have for it, but you've never seen obs obsidian this bright. It's like a rainbow is trapped underneath its glossy black surface. Like the entire ground here is polished black opal. The field glints through the sun at certain angles, momentary, momentarily blinding you. It looks slippery and shiny. Let's carefully walk around the edges. You find a patch that is a little different and take some readings. You confirm the material is not natural. It must have been created by the Convergent Domain because it's the same stuff they made the thumpers out of. Silica mixed with some trace organic elements. 
by looking at the striation stri striat striat Striadions and the cliffs nearby, you determined that this entire region used to be covered in a thick sheet of this dark gla glass rock. In most places, there is now a layer of soil over it. But if you dig down far enough, you'll probably find this layer everywhere, like the whole place has been glassed. No wonder there are so few plants here. The convergent domain must have paved this area to discourage plant life from growing, all except for the crystals which seem to sprout happily from the obsidian pavement. All right. There's a little collectible. If I remember correctly, there's some crap I gotta walk through on one side. The flies are awful. They come out in the heat of the day and buzz around you incessantly. They don't bite, but they seem to want something from you. Maybe the water or salt from your sweat? You hope they aren't laying eggs. This calls the most annoying ones rod flies because they're like long flexible sticks with a bunch of wings. They swarm in clouds around your face no matter how hard you try to shoo them away. He says they remind him of Mars. But there are other ones too, like the one that's just a big eyeball with a couple pairs of little wings. They make a loud buzzing sound and are always just out of reach when you try to swat them away. Uh, today your personal nemesis is one of those eye flies. There was a whole bunch of them earlier, but only one has persisted. It's been following you, staring at you all morning. You and Dis have been batting at it for an hour. Um, but it's a fast dodger. Ooh. Dis has finally given up and just plods forward. It even lands on his head, but he doesn't care. Let's be zen and let it be. Using Dis's Dis's strength, you find a sense of peace down deep deep down and just block out the incessant buzzing. Okay. Time passes. Uh, let's see. What is this way? Oh, this. This isn't a boss event, is it? Is this the boss event? This is an entirely different person when he's outside the colony walls. Without people constantly trying to correct his asocial behavior, it's like he's blossomed into someone who's actually confident. The more time you spend with him out here, the more glimpses you catch of the real Dis. But you can't do this, he says, jumping off a huge boulder and doing a cool roll at the end. Wait, no, bet you can't do it with your eyes closed. I can. You and Dis cavort around, daring each other to do more and more dangerous things. Dis isn't scared of anything. You think you see something up on one of the plateaus above you. The cliffside is covered in convenient vines dare Dis to race you to the next checkpoint. You're off before you even finish the sentence, Dis hollering no fair as you leave him in the dust. The two of you run and continue your day. Okay, not the event, not the boss event. I hope it's not on the other side. I don't think it's on the other side. I think it's probably over here. A precarious natural land bridge drops down sharply on both sides here. You kick a rock over the side, but don't hear it hit the bottom. Do you cross? Let's cross the bridge very carefully. You shuffle across it slowly, examining the cracks and sticking to the solid places. You accidentally send a few more pebbles skittering over the edge and think better them than me. Plus two of that has the highest value. There's a good chance of that. Okay, there's that. I'm gonna ignore for now. And head over here where we find a mysterious thing. Mm. You find your way blocked by a massive wall. No, a hollow pillar knocked over and lying on its side in the sand. It's absolutely massive. It stretches to your left and right at least a kilometer in each direction. Though at some point it's crumbled enough that you could likely scale over it. Let's check it out. <laughs> Plus two bonus to pairs, so. Let's put this, these guys out. That's a low. And we'll do these guys. Uh oh, this is. Eh. These guys? Oof. Plus two to a strength card to the right. Minus two to neighboring. Uh, 
Oh. We don't have pairs. Oh, that's not. We need 18 more. We'll use that. I just, this is a minus two. We need to get to 36. Oh my gosh. All right, whatever. We're just gonna fail this challenge. I guess. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through here. Uh, you walk and walk, but you get tired before you reach the end. At some point, the visible part of the pillar is completely consumed by a sand dune, and you decide to go no further. Uh, I can still go through here, though, so I guess we're good. Boss, 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 boss. Boss? That's not a boss event. Oh my gosh. This isn't the way we came, is it? Oh jeez, I'm lost. I don't think so. This is a huge area. I guess this is no, this is this is a different way. Okay. Uh I guess we'll push on through. I probably only have I can't even do two more things. I mean I could and really stress myself out. We'll see what happens. The path ahead is blocked by a field of snaking vines and brambles. They're flowering, enormous happy blossoms swaying the shimmering heat waves. You could push through them, but your hollow palm beeps a warning, a radiation warning. Uh, the flowers seem to be highly radioactive, far too radioactive th for the mild shielding from your suit provides. You might be able to pass through. If you don't mind feeling the effects of radiation, sickness, until you can detox at a med, med bed. Well, if it doesn't kill you outright, <sighs> radiation is unpredictable. Let's take a sample. And let's push through. Oh, jeez. Ah, gotta go home. Alright, we didn't get that. We gotta relax. We're not gonna make it to both locations this month. All right, vase. I guess we'll give you a gift. Ugh, I don't want to, but here you go. Who told you it was my birthday? Whatever this is, it looks dangerous. It's a good thing you brought it to me. Ugh. Ugh. I don't think anybody wants to talk to me, so we will we'll just give, um, Oh good, it's one of Vase's little birds, he says. Too tired. Oh no. Um. Uh, really? I mean, yeah, sure, of course, obviously, but don't get mad at me when word gets back to Vase that you're hanging out with me, okay? Dude's got eyes everywhere. Okay, we want to be more friendly with Rex than Vase. Ah! Well, maybe I'll give Rex a gift to get our friendship up some early pollen. He likes cake. I don't know what else he likes. Um, I'm sure um, he'll be okay with anything though. We'll give him a flower. I have everything I need, for real. This place is great. Three squares and all the hugs I could ever need. But I'll tell you what, my birthday is in the first month of pollen and I'd love a cake if you know how to make one. Okay, I don't think that increased friendship. That must be the trade-off, that we, we can't give him gifts. But we get to give him hugs. Okay. Let's go relax on the walls. It's a little miserable on the wall during wet season, but you manage to find a place where an overhanging building creates a, a bit of shelter. You make a pretty nice hideaway in there because people aren't generally hanging out on the wall. You have even more privacy than usual. All right, relaxed. Let's not forget any memories. I don't think I'm gonna forget any memories unless they're like zero. But it's late wet so we can give Tang and Dis some presents. Uh, here, have a little Prezi. And whoop. 
point can I do something else? I need 40 empathy. I already got the 20 empathy thing. Ah! Have a hug. That did not increase... The hugs don't increase friendship every month either. Although you can't give gifts every month, so, you know, just little trade-offs, I guess. But let's get out of here. Ooh, Dis wants to talk? You leave the front gates and see Dis talking to one of the senior surveyors. He listens intently to their instructions and the surveyor hands him a satchel of instruments and claps him on the shoulder before walking away. Dis turns to you. Hey, Solana, it's still kind of weird to be allowed outside the walls. Um... Ooh. This is secret too. Leave him alone to do his work. Uh, Dis looks pretty busy, so you say goodbye and let him get back to his work. Uh, you'll have to let him keep some of his secrets for now. Hmm. A little secretive. Oh, let me give you your birthday present. Did you give this to me because it's my birthday? I. I actually hate it when people make a big deal about my birthday. It's, uh, look, maybe you should just go do something nice for Tang. She actually likes the attention. We still got plus friendship. We are at 65. We're doing good now. We're doing pretty good. Gotten a lot of friendship with this this year. And we're about to get some more. Seven events remaining. We should be able to get to the boss event okay. Um, I think I'm going the right way. Even if I'm not, there shouldn't be very many events on this side. So that, that's one event that's skippable. I think there's another event over here that's skippable that like we don't have to go through. Uh... Yeah, don't have to do... Well, might have to do that. Can I just go around on this side? Okay, yeah. That's a second skippable. Third skippable. I don't know, that last one we did might have been the last... If, if it's on here. If it's on this side. I don't know, can we go directly to... A boss event there's that that's not where is the boss oh oh this is it this is it we made it expeditions has been collecting energy greetings from this area tracing the invisible uh, lay lines of power like this one from the thumper that brought you here in the first place they've converged due to this cave a nexus of power at the convergence of many lines you can feel the energy is different here, like a barely perceivable hum that prickles up the back of your neck, like something is watching you. It's likely this was some sort of sort of important place for the convergent domain, Utopia says, leaning on her glider. I sent teams through, but it gets mighty tight in there. I'm hoping you and Dis might have better luck wiggling in there. It might be the caves inside open up again, and if they do, take plenty of readings and report them back to me. Dis is vibrating beside you on nearly the same frequency as the weird power fluctuations. This is the real deal. Utopia nods and leaves you to it. What's the plan? Let's prep our caving equipment. This time you get headlamps and a little recording drone with a floodlight attachment, a tiny buzzing flying thing that circles around your heads and sometimes illuminates what you want to look at. It's intelligent, which just means it won't just do what you want. Uh, this bats at it in annoyance. Utopia has also left you with an anti-grav belt with a warning to practice extreme caution while spelunking down there. They make you lighter so you can climb more easily and won't hurt yourself as much if you fall. Let's enter the cave. Ooh. The narrow entrance leads to a bigger room that animals have clearly used as a den. It's enormous with some with glowing mushrooms on the walls and piles of bones in some crevices. Uh, in some places, the walls are made of iridescent convergent domain obsidian, like this was once a great hall millennia ago. 
You can feel a cool breeze coming from somewhere, but it'll be tricky to find in the dark. Ooh, a tough, toughy, a toughy. Well, at least um, I'm okay. I'll be okay with pushing through. But let's go ahead and one, two, three. Throw you guys out. That's a huge goal. We're gonna do these. T Whoops! Nope, not not you. Put you there. That is not a lot. Not looking good here. Uh, okay. I was thinking this might go better, but. <sighs> Four, five, six. Can I go three, four, five, six? I'm gonna go one, three, four, five, six, and ooh, let's push through. Gonna get us real stressed, but we can handle it. You find the source of the breeze by tossing some fine sand into the air and watching while the dust blows. It's a very tight crack. Good thing you and Dis are so small. You squeeze through and have to shimmy along on your bellies for about 10 meters, pushing your gear ahead of you. It's uncomfortable, but this is excitement draws you on. Past the crack, there are fewer signs of animals. The walls are a smooth, grown obsidian, which has a kind of melted, rainbow oil slick look. There are deeply carved glyphs on the walls at various intersections, like room designations or street names, you wonder. And other kinds of basins, alcoves grown into the rock full of odd protrusions are all ancient and worn and inexplicable now. It feels homey. You come to realize the convergent domain must have lived underground, that's why there's so few ruins on the surface. As you follow the cave complex down, it's clear this used to be a well-traveled path. The corridors branching off to other places are now blocked off, as if a big earthquake has had rattled this whole area. Only this one main path is still clear. It's too convenient to be a coincidence. The floor of the cave slopes downward like a slide and it's quite slippery. Pay attention to your footing. Uh oh. You follow the cave system down, 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 all the way to what must be the bottom of the cliffs. You have to climb down a three story wall in the last section and are grateful to your anti grav belt for making it easier. You're still tired though. You can see dim light below. Daylight? You emerge into a hidden valley, totally surrounded by tall cliffs. Did you just come down all that way? You're surrounded by the ruins of convergent domain buildings, in a much better condition than the windswept ones on the surface. It's perfectly still here and as quiet as space itself. What was this? Dis whispers reverentially. Some sort of converger facility? And it feels so familiar. You remember this place from your dreams and feel a throbbing sense of importance that is a bit unnerving. Something momentous happened to you here, or will happen to you someday. You poke around a little, then call Utopia and give her your coordinates. She swings down on her glider with extra ones for you and Dis tethered behind it. You're happy you won't have to climb all the way back up. Great finds, kids. Great find, kids. This place didn't show up on any of our aerial scans. Took me a while to find a route in. You look bushed, she says. I'll stick around to get some readings, but you head on back to the depot and get some rest. Don't worry. Um, we aren't going to push on without you. All right, let's go home. Got that plus two engineering. And it's glow again. What are we looking like? We got 18 reasoning, 22 engineering. We got big stress. We got uh, 95 stress. So I'm just going to rest. It looks gorgeous. As scary as Glow is, it's just so pretty. I don't think anybody wanna talk, wants to talk. Let's say hi to dad though. You spot your dad standing stock still, his eyes closed and head tilted to listen. Hey Gooseberry, have you ever paid attention to the planet during Glow? It feels different. It's like a hum, maybe from the plants? Heck, maybe even the wormhole. All right, nobody wants to talk. There should be a, isn't there a crystal somewhere around here during glow? 
Not that I'm having trouble finding crystals. I don't like that you guys are hanging out. Okay. Let's just go relax and finish up the year and see how things go. The view from the wall during glow is absolutely breathtaking. The wormhole seems to smother the sky like a swirling jewel tone bowl pressing down on the gloom. Everything in the wilderness is lit up and seems to breathe in and out with the planet like one living creature made of stars. It's beautiful. You could almost forget how dangerous it is. Let's not forget anything. You're relaxing in your quarters with your dad when you hear the colony siren. The enemy is here. Huh. Seems early this year. We should head to the shelter in the lounge. You've been drilling on a new evacuation procedures for the past month. There's no need to be a hero now that there are so many new soldiers from the Helio. It's probably best if you just follow instructions to head to the lounge with your dad. But we're gonna uh, rush to the front lines because that that's what we're doing. We're gonna get nice and stressed after relaxing. You muster with the rest of the defense force at the gates. Rhett and Lum are arguing about what tactics to employ. Lum keeps trying to rally the soldiers with a heartening speech about giving it everything they've got. All the drones, all the explosives, and Rhett, keep, and Rhett keeps cutting in. Don't need to take any big risks. It's a smaller attack and we have more than enough plas rifles and turrets. We should save our other resources for when we do need them. Why do things halfway? We need to get in there and kick their asses back to the goo they came from. We need to show people that we have everything under control for morale. Rhett tries one more time to wrestle control of the forces back from Lum, but Lum cuts him off. Fire the explosive rounds, he orders. Arm the charges. Shells scream through the permanent night, followed by explosions you feel vibrate up through your boots. The Helios are unfazed, but you and the other shadow guards exchange nervous looks. You hear yelling, then another boom as the secondary explosives detonate. The baying of bloodthirsty animals reaches your ears, then... Lum holds his finger to his hearspeak. Great work, just the stragglers incoming. Open the gates. To battle. This is an easy one, so... Uh, let's throw you in there, and you in there, and you in there. Okay, let's not get stressed. Let's just throw in you, 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 and you. Uh, maybe we swap you with you. See if that... Nope, that's lower. I guess that makes sense. Wild, wild. 14. One wild, wild... Here. Perfect. Super goal. We got plus two combat. You face off against a lesser Xeno, some kind of finned, semi-aquatic thing, already half-dead and limping doggedly through the gates. It's almost comical how easy it is to stun and kill it. By the time you're done, the other soldiers have dispatched the rest of the creatures. Smoke drifts in from the battlefield from the explosions and acrid scent of triumph. After the attack, Lum gathers everyone in the lounge and holds a big celebration for the soldiers. There's feasting and drinking and songs of valor, and as the party goes on long into the night, some drift away in pairs. Or more. Mars and Rex keep the dancing going. Even Nemi seems to relax, especially when the other cadets invite her to drink with them. Cal and Tammy sit together and talk all night, giggling about something and going quiet when anyone comes near. Tonight, everyone seems convinced that this victory means the colony will be safe forever. Maybe it will be. You sure want to believe it. All right, that is a wrap on year six. We are, next time we are going to watch, next time we are going to start year uh, seven, age 16. Got some friendship with uh, most of our characters here. We're not looking older yet. It's our last year in this stage, this um, sort of, adolescent before we start looking more like older teen adult like but look at this lovely snow not a bad year for the colony pretty good year for the colony despite these um horrible helios people i don't know when my next episode is going to be 
I'd like to say there will be less time between the next episode and this episode that there was between this one and the last one, but I am going to be pretty busy for the next week going on a trip, but I will try and get this out soon. I will also be um, trying to get out some other videos. I'm going to be streaming some, but yeah, don't forget to tune in for year seven You'll be turning 16 and uh, maybe investigating this mysterious stranger some more. Uh, thanks for watching.